Joe is not done. Far from it. He knows there is still more work to do, and our nation will continue to praise his bold and visionary leadership as president. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. And it is my great honor to have Joe's endorsement in this race. You sure do. And it is my intention to go out and earn this nomination and to win. So in the days and weeks ahead, I, together with you, will do everything in my power to unite our Democratic Party, to unite our nation, and to win this election. You know, as many of you know, before I was elected as Vice President, before I was elected as United States Senator, I was the elected Attorney General, as I've mentioned, of California, and before that I was a courtroom prosecutor. In those roles, I took on perpetrators of all kinds. <laughs> Predators who abused women, fraudsters who ripped off consumers, cheaters who broke the rules for their own gain. So hear me when I say, I know Donald Trump's type. And in this campaign, I will proudly, I will proudly put my record against his. As a young prosecutor, when I was in the Alameda County District Attorney's Office in California, I specialized in cases involving abuse. Donald Trump was found liable by a jury for committing abuse. As Attorney General of California, I took on one of our country's largest for-profit colleges and put it out of business. Donald Trump ran a for-profit college, Trump University, that was forced to pay $25 million to the students it scammed. As district attorney to go after polluters, I created one of the first environmental justice units in our nation. Donald Trump stood in Mar-a-Lago and told big oil lobbyists he would do their bidding for a $1 billion campaign contribution. During, during the foreclosure crisis, I took on the big Wall Street banks and won $20 billion for California families. <laughs> holding those banks accountable for fraud. Donald Trump was just found guilty of 34 counts of fraud. And I want to bring in CNN's Jamie Gangale to talk a little bit about that. Nancy Pelosi has just endorsed Kamala Harris uh, in her presidential run, and it seems like she may be not the last when it comes to either former or current congressional leaders. So I think we're going to see today the trifecta of Democratic uh, leaders. We just heard Nancy Pelosi, former speaker. I am told by multiple sources that as soon as today, and I would guess today, we're going to see Senator Schumer on the Senate side, leader there, and uh, Hakeem Jeffries on the House side. That would leave just Barack Obama as the only sort of major party leader. But I think what's important is you are seeing an avalanche mm -hmm. of support. The party is coalescing. They did not want a messy, multi-candidate, um, speed dating, quick primary going in to this convention. And even I think people who were concerned about whether uh, Vice President Harris could beat Donald Trump have decided the party 
has to come together and go all in. It is remarkable, too, to see some of these names that you've reported, Jamie, that are being floated as vice presidential, potential vice presidential picks that could have potentially challenged her. And that we are, what, 24 hours, barely, 24 hours. And to see them almost all come out and, and endorse her and, and just make it very clear, we're not we're not doing this. I can't think of anyone who's on the likely list that's been floating uh, and, and even those who might be less likely who have not already endorsed her. We had three of the four yesterday. That was uh, um, North Carolina Governor uh, Cooper. We had Mark Kelly, Senator from Arizona, Josh Shapiro, Governor of Pennsylvania. Then today, Andy Bashir, Governor of Kentucky. Those are the four names you hear most often. They have all endorsed her. Illinois Governor Pritzker endorsed her uh, today. And so I, I will tell you, I'm not completely surprised about the Pelosi endorsement because a couple of hours ago, her daughter Christine endorsed. When you have Adam Schiff yesterday, who's very close to Pelosi endorsing, and Christine Pelosi today, you know it was coming. You can read those tea yes. leaves. Yeah. yeah. The calculus from those in the party, from the party, is that something really messy is going to be worse than getting accused of clearing the field for someone. So, Talk a little bit about how they're thinking about that. As some people may argue, they're denying uh, there being a lot of different choices and people actually being able to pick and choose. Right, so the word coronation has been uh, thrown around a little bit. I think that that's really code for something else. And that was, there were skeptics. There are people who were not sure that Vice President Harris would be the strongest candidate to take on Donald Trump. And so there was an argument, let's have an open field, let's see who's out there. But when you are four weeks away from a convention, and I spoke to someone who is working on the videos for that convention yesterday, and I said, how's it going? And the source said, well, the message is the same, but we don't know who we're making the videos about, you know, who are, who are the names. Uh, the Democratic Party is known for messy. That's not, you know, but I think this time they don't feel that they are running against a, quote, normal Republican candidate. Someone said to me, this is not Mitt Romney. This is Donald Trump. Uh, the source said to me, democracy in peril is not a campaign slogan. And so there was this tug in the party. Do we open it up and see if there might be someone stronger? Or do we coalesce? Is Vice President Harris the best one? In 24 hours, with all the money that's been raised and this flood of endorsements, uh, they've been very disciplined. Mayor Jeffries, first, will you endorse Kamala Harris? And then I have one other question for you. Well, Lita Schum and I are scheduled to meet with Vice President Harris shortly. The House came back into session today. Uh, the Senate does not come back into session tomorrow. I'm excited uh, for that meeting. And let me say this, that Vice President Kamala Harris has excited the community. She's excited the House Democratic Caucus. And she's exciting the country. And so I'm looking forward to sitting down with her in person in short order with Leader Schumer. And we'll have more to say about the path forward as soon as that meeting comes. Quick question. What does President Biden need to do these final few months to ease the path to help, you know, while he's in office, to ease the path to make it easier for Democrats to flip the House and, and to keep the White House? Well, President Biden is going to continue uh, to do his job. And he's put the country first. He's put the American people first. He's put hard-working American taxpayers first, which is what President Biden has always done. And as a result of his leadership, We've seen transformational change, fixing our crumbling bridges, roads, tunnels, airports, our sewer and water systems, rescuing the economy from the once in a century pandemic, gun safety legislation for the first time in 30 years, standing up for our veterans, bringing domestic manufacturing jobs back home to the country and passing the Inflation Reduction Act 
which is the largest investment in combating the climate crisis in the history of the world. We still have more work to do. We still have to lower costs. We still have to end price gouging. We have to continue to grow the middle class, defend democracy, and fight for reproductive freedom. President Biden will continue to do that job, along with Vice President Harris and Democrats in the House and the Senate. You know, this has been a few weeks of very intense discussions about Biden being at the top of the ticket. What light can you shed to the American public about the concerns that you conveyed to the president about staying on the top of the ticket? It's a private conversation with President Joe Biden that will remain private. Mr. Leader, I mean, there has been a lot of reporting about what was said and wasn't. So just for the record, can you just be clear? Did you ever tell the president that he could hurt Democrats' chances at taking back the majority if he stayed in the race? And secondly, secondly, what do you say to those, whether it's Ron Klain or congressional Republicans, who claim that Democratic Party leaders or elected officials push the president out? President uh, Joe Biden is a heroic patriotic and transformational figure. And he will go down in history as one of the greatest public servants of all time. That much is clear. I had a private conversation with President Biden to express the perspectives that were wide ranging of the House Democratic Caucus. That conversation will remain private. In terms of my Republican colleagues, former President Donald Trump and extreme MAGA Republicans are having a meltdown right now. A complete and total meltdown. Why? Because their presidential nominee is unpopular. The extreme mega Republican policies are unpopular, including trying to impose a nationwide abortion ban on the American people. And their Project 2025 is unpopular. They have so that's a direct blow to Trump, right? Harris and everybody else is coming together. And this is big for a couple reasons. It's it's a sign of unity because Harris is coming out and saying, not only am I going to take you on and I have the skills to take on a particular criminal monster such as yourself, Donald, but also we're ready to go. It's been one day. I got my campaign office. I got my staff. I got my people. The media's here. And my in, in one day, I've unified my party more than your party is unified because there are tons of Republicans that supported Haley that still don't want to support Donald Trump that don't want to vote for Trump are saying that they, they probably won't or they definitely won't. You have so many anti-Trump Republicans and yet in one day Harris has united almost the entirety of the Democratic Party. Nothing's ever 100% of course, but look at the endorsement she's got. She's gotten the labor endorsement. She's got endorsements from pretty much all of the squad. She's got endorsements from the moderates and people that aren't endorsing her, they're dropping out and saying, I don't want to run against her. You know, uh, more conservative people, like I think Joe Manchin, I don't believe has endorsed her, but has said, you know, I'm, I, I have no power to challenge her. And so this one is already doomed for Donnie. She in one day has out fundraised him, out unified him, and is ready to prosecute the case against Donald Trump getting another four years.